I am in a bit of a difficult season of life right now. I came back from Thailand a couple of weeks ago, about a week and a half, and since then it's just been difficult. And on the Dirty Dream podcast, we made the promise to show you what it's like, not just looking back from the other side of the fire, but what it is like dancing in the flames. And that means that I don't have the answers right now. I don't know exactly which steps to take to get out of this difficult funk that I feel that I'm in, but all I could say is this too shall pass. Let time pass, and really, the only thing that will remain is meant to remain. And to me, I see that as love. But it is hard. I'm still dealing with chronic back pain, and it's got me in such a spiral of just despair and not knowing what I'm supposed to do that everything else seems so heavy. And I feel like there's this weight on me to do so much and be so much. With this back pain, it's just debilitating at times and it makes me feel like I'm literally going insane. But today I woke up and I had the call with Brendan Backstrom and my back ability group and he walked me off the ledge as usual, made me laugh. And what I realized is that if it wasn't for these difficulties, I wouldn't be digging so deep into who I am and who I want to be to figure out what I can overcome, what I'm capable of enduring. And this, these actions, the way that we retain our spirit and our fire and our love through the difficult times. This is forging who we'll be once we get out of these difficulties. Last week, I talked to pretty much all of my best friends, each one of them, and just talked about what I'm, what I'm feeling, what I'm going through, and realized that they're all going through their own shit too. And I don't know what it is, but it kind of feels like right now we're all going through something. And maybe that's just because I'm in what feels like a deeper hole, but life is not easy. It's hard. Life is fucking hard. And I've been saying that a lot lately. To say it, takes the weight off and makes it okay. One of my favorite entrepreneurs and just people I look up to, Alex Ramosi, he says, this is what hard feels like. This is what you sign up for when you dream big or when you live a life that's full of meaning. You sign up for hardship. And it's the same thing with love. Oftentimes, love is really just pain, but we do it anyway because it's worth it. And that's what life is to me. It's not meant to be this cookie cutter, middle of the road experience. Life is meaningful because of the ups and the downs. And that is what I'm signing up for. That is what it means to me to live a true and a real and a beautiful life is to feel all the different feels, to go with the ups and the downs and to allow yourself to feel it. But you know, I'm dancing in the flames now. I woke up and didn't know how I was going to face the day. It's a stormy, rainy day here in Japan. And it feels like the world is just kind of in this place of, of hurt. But that makes it beautiful. That makes it meaningful. That makes it real. And sometimes I'm just so fed up with this pain that I just say, fuck it. And like, I just do me anyway. It makes me push through to the other side and it makes me get more out of myself. As they say, like the pressure makes the diamonds and I feel a lot of pressure right now. I'm in the stage where I'm moving to Tokyo in a few weeks. You might be able to hear the wind, the rain just <laughs> pelting on my windows around me here in my small Osaka apartment. But moving to Tokyo in a couple of weeks, looking for a new job. I'm trying to create this brand of being a traveler and just a personal brand. I'm trying to make that my career and it's a lot of pressure. It's a lot of pressure that I put on myself and then dealing with this back pain on top of it. it feels like just being attacked, not being attacked, but it feels like being at war in many different ways and I'm fighting. But damn, is it meaningful? And 
as I tell these stories, as I tell what it's like to be in this pain and what it's like just to be dancing in the flames, I often feel like people don't want to hear about this. They don't want to hear about another newsletter about dealing with back pain. Like, what is that about? But then I do it anyway, I send it out and I get responses that this is the kind of stuff that people truly want and need because so often, I mean, I'm thinking about this, my own human um, nature, I don't want to send out stuff that's negative or make people feel bad. And we all, I'm sure, feel the same way. And creators, like somebody sent me a response saying that they were just grateful for my vulnerability in the last newsletter and that they really appreciated it. And a lot of the other creators they follow, they kind of wait until they get out of the storm until they can look back and say, this is where I went wrong. This is why I was in pain, but now it's over. And, you know, here's another flowery lesson or a poetic, I don't know, philosophical lesson to look back on. But me, I do not have the answers right now. And what I can urge you to do if you're in a difficult spot is just continue weathering the storm. That's all we got because it's gonna turn around. Things will turn around eventually. And when they do, you can look back on the hardship, the struggle, the pain, the season that made us. And all we'll see is how beautiful it was, how meaningful it was, how it got the best out of us. And I'm excited for that. Of course, I wanna be out of this fucking pain, but this is where I'm at right now. And I'm living my dream. I'm living the dream that I wanted so badly a few years ago, just to be in Japan. And now I'm here telling my story, meeting people that just blow me away. Being part of a creative universe that I truly am in awe of. Just these other people who are doing their best to make the world a better place and to get the best out of themselves and just help people. And I don't think a lot of this would happen without this struggle, without being in this pain. It's made me who I am. And I know that this will pass. Ralph Waldo Emerson, the 19th century writer and theologian and interesting guy, American, he says, the years teach much which the days never know. And when we're in these difficult times, these difficult moments, the days feel like we can't manage like we just can't get through another day, we don't know what to do. But if we just continue trying, like every day, I still went to the gym today. I thought my day was ruined, I woke up and I had a flare up in my back. Luckily the call happened about 30 minutes later and Brendan got me to pretty much go to the gym and just try this protocol with this certain part of my back, called the SI joint and some reason yeah it got me out of it, it loosened it up i got to the gym and i gave it my best effort for another day and i was going to do nothing today but now i'm here i'm doing this doing what i can even though i'm in some pain right now but it is what it is i've learned to deal with it and looking back at the years of pain the years of struggle the years of feeling lost i will have gleaned so many important lessons lessons which have made me which day-to-day -day life it's really hard to see when you're in it in the day-to-day -day. but we have to have a grander perspective than that we have to look beyond the days the weeks even the months and see the years and that doesn't mean do nothing that doesn't mean do nothing with the days because the years only matter if they're filled with meaningful days but that means broaden your scope. Try to just calm down and see the bigger picture. But this will mean nothing. The problems that we deal with now will likely mean nothing. In a week, in a month, very likely in a year. I'm reading right, right now a great book, uh, the, the Laws of Human Nature by Robert Greene, one of my favorite writers. And he says, your task as a student of human nature, as someone and someone aspiring to reach the greater potential of the human animal is to widen your relationship to time as much as possible and slow it down. 
This means you do not see the passage of time as an enemy, but rather as a great ally. Each stage of life has its, has its advantages. Those of youth are most obvious, but with age comes greater perspective. But aging does not frighten you. Death is equally your friend. It motivates you to make the most of each moment. It gives you a sense of urgency. Time is your great teacher and master. This affects you deeply in the present. Awareness that a year from now, this current problem you are experiencing will hardly seem so important will help you lower your anxiety and, just, and adjust your priorities. Knowing that time will reveal the weaknesses of your plans, you become more careful and deliberate with them. And I mean, this is a great stoic principle just to take a bird's eye view and realize how small we are compared to the greater scheme that we're all a part of here. To take a grand perspective and just see that everything does pass with time, the hurt, the pain, the struggle, it's all part of being human. And if you're feeling lost, confused, discouraged, you don't know what you're supposed to be doing right now, just know that time will reveal what it's meant to and to just stay, stay at it with whatever you're doing. And I know how hard it is. I know how hard it is to feel confused about life. There's so much pressure telling us what we should be, what we're supposed to be doing, how we should think. And I'm just as caught up in it, wondering how to make sense of it all myself. You know, the people that I look up to, the people I strive to be like, they're going through the same stuff. Nobody has it figured out. This has been a huge lesson for me. And to tell a little anecdote, this woman, um, Lisa in Japan, she is the social media person and like the head photographer for Tokyo Weekender, one of the, the leading English magazines in Japan, maybe the number one one. And I thought it was my dream job to work for them, you know, looking for my next job since I finished teaching English, I'm looking for something related to writing and creating. And I applied, even though they weren't really hiring. But I reached out to Lisa in Japan as well, um, just to kind of get a more human approach and just asked her her advice. And that was a big step for me. I think I talked about it a few podcasts ago, but just reaching out, getting over that hurdle and just asking what I should do at this stage to kind of get to where she is. And she never responded. Didn't really expect her too much to move 50-50 shot. And it could just take some time. Maybe she will eventually, but the point was that I did it and that felt better than, than anything. And if I get a response, great. If I don't, so be it. But she posted recently on her Instagram and her Instagram is just beautiful photos of Japan. It's just one of those classic accounts that just makes Japan look like another planet. Just so surreal and ethereal and just, just beautiful. And like, how did she take these shots? Jesus. But she posted recently, like, hey everyone, how's it going? Um, yeah, me, I'm doing great. Yet I have like zero desire to post on this platform anymore. And she went on about just feeling like it's just take the taking the joy out of it for her, having to do it as her job, take photos. And clearly she loves photography, she's amazing at it. But I just wonder, like what? What am I after and what are we after? What do we really want? And there's two sides of this. Of course, I want the life where I am, I want to design my own life where I'm doing what I want. I want to be writing and creating and making a brand and name for myself, but at what cost? Because everything we do is an attempt to be happy in some way, to fill this void inside of us. I just want to be free. That is what I want ultimately. I want freedom. I don't want to feel like this is pressure where I have to do things just because I'm creating this machine that has to be fed. And that's kind of how I feel at this moment. But, you know, the life that I thought I wanted so badly, at least in Japan, <laughs> I could be the next Lisa. Even she is struggling. Even she is going through it and you know, it seems like 
she has it all. She has it made. She's just taking photos of Japan, going to awesome hotels, taking photos of them, and getting paid for it. I'm sure she is living her dream in some sense, but it's also taken the joy out of photography for her. And that was almost, I mean, that felt like a breath of fresh air to see that, that even she's struggling. And then after she said like, I have zero desire to post on Instagram anymore, she posted like a photo of the cherry blossoms from last year and it just felt so hollow and empty. Like she was just completely doing it for her work. And that seemed pretty sad to me because I don't want to get there with my creative endeavors. I do not want to get to that place where I feel like I'm writing just to feed this algorithm or just to get followers or I don't know what. The experience comes first for me. I want to live, live life, and then the creativity follows. But it's hard to know what to make of that because there is no right answer. You have to, I mean, I'm going for it. I'm still trying to be this creator and I want to create a brand, but to what to what extent? To what extent am I putting my happiness on the line just to make it, in air quotes, make it, you know? And it's interesting. I'm putting a lot of pressure on myself to be like these guys I look up to on YouTube, Modern Wisdom, Chris Williamson, one of my favorite podcasts and podcasters, but he's under a lot of pressure too. And you could see it, it comes out sometimes where, I mean, he cl clearly is living his dream life and has exceeded all of his wildest dreams, but even he gets so caught up in just feeding this thing and it's hard to know what to make of that. This other guy, Dan Co, who I'm kind of just getting into, but his stuff is all about being creating personal brand, one person business. He's huge on YouTube, and yeah, that is what I want. I want to be creating on my terms and helping people. I mean, that's ultimately what it's for: showing people how beautiful this world is. But part of me tells me that even he is not that happy with it I don't know like I said dancing in the flames don't have the answers but I got a lot of questions and I think that's what matters and just realizing that nobody has it easy you know no one no matter who we are we're battling in some way and the grass always does seem greener on the other side also reading about this in the laws of human nature, but we want what we don't have always, you know? It's this perpetual chase to get to this thing we think will make us happy, but in the end, we gotta ask what we're really chasing and why we're doing it. And as human beings, we are actually wired to want what we don't have. And that's interesting because we find pleasure in not getting to that finish line, not crossing, you know, 100,000 followers or certain dollar amounts, bank account, or we think these things will make us happy. Like for me, a clear example, well, getting out of pain to not be in pain, I think will significantly change my life for the better. That's not a great example, but finishing my book. It's been about two years since the initial trip. I'm almost done. And I'm really trying to get out of, I wanna finish it and I have to, you know, I can't leave that on the table, but I don't know if it's gonna make me happy finishing the book and being done with it because then I'll just move on to the next thing. The process in itself is what brings me joy to be able to work on it at night and in the morning and to be back in that place in Lisbon, Portugal and seeing how this book has changed. I'm on the 10th draft now and it is such a different book than when it started. It's so cool to see that after working with an editor and these small iterations, the things I add, 
the things I'm looking up in history to add into the book. Like I, I'm writing a book on Lisbon, Portugal, pretty much. And that's pretty damn cool. It's like I never thought I'd be doing that. But here I am connecting it to literary, you know, greats of the time, like Fernando Pessoa. Pessoa. Wait. Fernando? I don't know. Pessoa. Uh, he's an early 20th century writer and just like doing some research on him yesterday because I bought his book when I was in Lisbon and telling stories about it. It's just like, that is the point. It's in the chase. It's seeing how you are working towards something that brings us happiness, not necessarily getting to that place. Like for me, with the back experience, when I have a dip, I have a pain-free day, it feels like I'm a superhero. Just to be out of pain, it's like, it just feels surreal, almost. And that's gonna be my life where every day is like that. It's how life should be. But seeing the incremental progress is what makes me happy. Seeing that I am making progress. That's why it's hard right now, feeling like I've taken a step back, but it's all part of it, the ups and the downs of life. But I think this is an interesting concept that we want what we don't have and pleasure, happiness, fulfillment comes in pursuing something rather than getting it. You know, love, for example, we want the relationship that we don't have. We're looking over the shoulder of our uh, girlfriend, boyfriend, whatever, and say, ooh, like, I wish I had that person as a girlfriend, or that person looks happier. I wish I had that marriage or that perfect family life. We're never really satisfied with what we have. Even if that person who we, whose life we want is looking over the shoulder as well and wishing they had our life. And just realizing that it kind of takes the pressure off and just helps you see that it's who we are. There's nothing wrong with you for, you know, wanting this thing that seems desirable or illusory, you can't seem to grasp it because that's just who we are. And this for me also means that we need something to go after. And that means that the bigger the thing to go after, the longer it's gonna take and the more rewarding the journey is gonna be. I mean, the back feeds into this one very well. It's a hell of a thing to overcome. Almost eight years of back pain and the process of getting out of this hole is the most rewarding thing that I've ever been a part of. Being a part of this community where I'm learning from other people and being able to help them, they're helping me with the last couple of days. I kind of felt like I was going insane and just being in pain for the last like week and they helped me out of it. They helped me this morning on the call. You know, I need to laugh. I cried before hopping on the call and then, yeah. This is what we're here for. This is why we're alive, to feel these highs, feel these lows, and go after something real. What that means is you gotta have a fucking dream. You gotta have something, an ideal life, which you are striving to attain. Put it out there in the universe. Get real with yourself and say, what do I want and what will I give everything for? Because it's not easy. There's gonna be times like what I'm in right now where I feel lost. I feel a bit discouraged with my creative stuff, partly because of my back. It just kind of puts a shadow over things, but I don't know. I just feel like this is pressure that maybe I'm trying to do too much and trying to be like these guys, Chris Williamson and Dan Coe. And, you know, they're the top of the echelon, if that's the proper phrasing. They're at the top of their game. And I'm comparing myself to those guys. I'm saying, like that's, which is partly good, because I know I'm going to get there someday, you know, there to do podcast, me and Greg, I'm so grateful and happy to be on this journey, but that's who I'm stacking myself up against, because I'm so deeply inspired by them, but I know that they're flawed human beings too, and if they could do it, we could do it, in a different way, but in our way, and so the, the fulfillment, the happiness, the satisfaction, it doesn't necessarily come from reaching the thing, which is pretty crazy. 
it comes from the small steps that you take every day to get there. So like I was saying with the book, yeah, it's gonna be cool to finish it, but it's, you know, the times I wake up in the middle of the night and have an idea about the cover. And that just makes me excited to get up in the morning and work on it. It's just seeing how the chapters are cleaned up and the story just made better and better. That is what makes me happy. That's what gives my life meaning. And we need meaning in life more than anything. And to take this, you know, to actually prove it, Jordan Peterson, the psychologist and, you know, philosopher, one of my greatest influences, he says, when do you experience the positive emotion that's associated with happiness? Not when you've attained the goal, but when you're pursuing one. Your positive emotion is associated with movement forward. You could say your positive emotion is the psychological equivalent of forward movement, just as your negative emotion is the psychological equivalent of freezing or retreating. Your emotions are very, very tightly tied to your action. Freeze, retreat means negative, advance toward a goal, positive. So no goal means no positive emotion. And we don't have to have a, I mean, it's better to have a very specific goal, but it could be just the dream life that you want. And a big part of this is knowing what you don't want. That might have been, that might be the biggest thing that I've realized on my journey. I've had these jobs, you know, work teaching English and working in stores, working in real estate. And everyone I realized is not me. I don't want that life. I don't want to answer to a boss. I don't want to have to clock in. I don't want people tell me what to do and I don't want to be wasting time when I could be living my life enjoying it and working hard at the times when I want to be working it's a lot it's a lot to ask for but it's definitely possible I think in this next chapter my story here we're going to take another step closer to that life kind of realize kind of taking a step onto more entrepreneurial ventures instead of looking for a a job that will satisfy me for a little bit but just realize that everybody feels this way everybody wants what they can have everybody is looking at the noise on social media that we're inundated with and saying look how happy everybody else is yet those exact people are thinking about thinking it about everybody else it's a vicious cycle until we realize that's just who we are there's nothing wrong with it it's human nature and we do have everything we need to be happy because it's all inside of us. How can, you know, our emotions go from so negative to so positive without anything really changing? It's because of how we feel inside. And for me, like I was saying, freedom is the most important thing in my life, but also just peace and clarity of mind. That is more important than anything. And it's hard, man. It could be very difficult but it's possible for all of us what's gotten me out of this is exercise when i could last week exercise got me out of the slump and then also put me back into it but that's okay never gonna stop but then just talking to my friends like i said if i wasn't having a difficult time i probably wouldn't reach out to each one of my best friends and just ask them for some help and just see how they're doing but that's what we need, just human connection, which is something that we're losing in a modern day. People, sunshine, walks, but that is the stuff that is important. And obviously, I think you know me, well maybe, but that doesn't mean just do nothing. And that doesn't mean don't strive for success, whatever that means, that doesn't mean don't go for your big goals and I want to make money just as much as anybody. I want to be successful. I want to make it, but I'm really trying to figure out why I want what I want and what I want. Money equals freedom to me. And that is what I want, ultimately. I want to design a life where I do what I want, when I want, and make the world better for it. What else could you ask for? Like in this, you know, my... Osaka apartment I don't need much else than this it's small it's minimal I have my things and I'm happy obviously as I get older I have a family and stuff I want 
more than this, but for now, as a single dude, I just want to travel and create. I want to be pouring life out of me instead of adding more to my life, things and responsibilities. I want kind of a freedom and I want to give. That is what feels the best. That is what clears my head. It's penning these words, doing stuff like this, even though it took me getting over some resistance, getting over my pain today just to make this happen, but I already feel better. I'm so glad, so grateful to be able to do this. Kind of transports me into another world or just been standing here for 30 minutes talking. That's a beautiful thing because this matters to me. Life is nothing but now. It's just happening now. And what's cool is that to have a goal, to have a dream, that gives us a North Star to walk towards. But life is nothing but each step that we take every day. That is what matters. Today is all there is. And if today I'm in a bit of pain, then so be it. I'm not going anywhere. And that's what makes it meaningful. To have the highs, have the lows, have deep sense of feeling and meaning. That's what makes it worth it. That's why we're here. So, I think that's all I got for today. Much, much love y'all. Thanks for sticking with us.